I was fortunate enough to visit the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles and got a chance to look at their Gem and Mineral Hall, which I guess is one of the most comprehensive in the United States. And while I was looking at all these variations of minerals, it struck me that the diversity is almost as equally awe-inspiring as the diversity of life on this planet. Are we looking at some form of life? Um, so I just thought, well, that's an, that's an interesting anecdote. That's an interesting question. So I, I just became naturally curious about that concept, and I searched it on Google, and I found a few people talking about this idea that gems and stones are in some way alive. There was even a quote from an esteemed New York biophysicist named Jeremy Palacci, who wrote, there is a blurry frontier between active and alive. So naturally, I continued down that rabbit hole, um, and I came into a number of interesting stories, one of which came from Dennis Morrison, who has a channel here on YouTube, and his video tells the story of a Native American image stone that he found in 1986 that began to display various different symbols and designs on this stone, and it apparently was witnessed by a number of people. Dennis goes on to describe how the power in the stone seemed to exhaust itself, doing this all together and then when putting it out to researchers an anthropologist responded and he hypothesized that the stone was from a shaman's kit so it's just one example of a story where someone is claiming a rock is behaving in a way that defies scientific understanding I'm not sure if there's any any validity to that story i'll put a link to it below in, in the description um i used to collect rocks i you know i like rocks they're neat the, the all kinds of, uh, you know, colors and shapes and uh, different patterns. I've always had a sort of casual interest in geology, you know, as a result of, of collecting stones when I was a kid. But as I was looking at these gems and minerals on display over at the Natural History Museum, you know, you really start to see a lot of organic-looking fibers, textures, uh, this idea that they are active in some way. And if you don't know this guy, this is Ralph Smart. And Ralph is pretty smart, so this is what he had to say about it. Crystals are also oscillating. Why is this important? Because it shows us they are alive. Not in the sense that we are, but in another kind of sense. Nikola Tesla. Google him. Thank me later. If you want to understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, vibration, frequency. Some of these ideas that this guy was proposing were really interesting and in, in bringing up technology and media recording, uh, the, you know, in terms of our human accomplishments we have carbon data, uh, carbon-based data, like, you know, hard drives are, are built on this technology, CDs, DVDs, and that perhaps on some galactic level of, of activity, stones are a natural way of uh, housing data of some kind. Uh, and the movie uh, Star Trek IV, the Voyage Home came to mind because there you have a plot revolving around an ancient alien probe that has entered orbit around Earth. It's trying to make contact with the whales, and the whales, have, of course, are uh, extinct at this stage. So again, I'm, I'm fascinated by these ideas of a, a misunderstanding of ancient science. Spock, you're talking about the end of every life on Earth. Can be found only in the past. We're going to attempt time travel. We have a, a very established scientific arena of geology when it comes to um, stones and minerals and, and, and a certain understanding. So to understand where I'm coming from on this, I think you have to remove certain 
preconditioned ideas about what stones are. So I'll go ahead and share with you some of the um, minerals and gems I, uh, I photographed while I was at the Natural History Museum. And I will accompany the images with some uh, New Age music to help you get into the spirit of what I'm talking about here. That's nice. Into the crystal matrix we go. So humans live and die with, within that scope of, of a lifespan that ranges from, you know, 50 to, to 90 years. And that's our understanding of life. But what if life is far more complex than that? It's similar to how we look at a tree's life. and you know that, that We know a tree is alive in its own way, but do we understand its life? You know, do we understand uh, the message? Of, of a tree is there a message or is it just is it just all happenstance is it just all chaotic random you know an argument you might hear from an atheist or, or an anarchist in regards to this is that it's it's all chaos that life on this planet is just happenstance it's just a big coincidence um, but when you start to really look at the complexity of designs in minerals alone uh, again you begin to see something that feels greater than what we understand. You know, stones have always struck me as magical in, in a way. And, you know, they are beautiful to look at. There's uh, uh, an amazing play of light and color. And you just have to wonder, what is that? What, why? Why would that happen? Why so beautiful and so geometrically diverse? The museum also featured a lot of great fossils, dinosaur um, fossils, and petrified organic things that were on display. So why? Why would, why would that process happen? Why does bone turn to stone? Wouldn't it just all be eaten away by bacteria? So again, you know, is the preservation of these fossils just a coincidence? Or... Is there a reason why certain minerals forge these bonds with the calcium and turn into stone? If it's all chaos, why wouldn't there just be a bacteria that eats it away and it's gone forever? Uh, it, it just seems odd to me that we, that we have a record of these species. It seems almost, um, you know, too perfect. Minerals also do this, you know? Um... So I don't know, I, I just, it just opened up a lot of thoughts, it opened up a lot of questions in my mind, 
Um, you know, I may sound like an idiot, and that's that's okay. Um, <laughs> but I think it's important to continue to ask questions about things that we think we have a fundamental understanding of, that we think we have a fully comprehensive scientific um, understanding around. I didn't really begin the journey into the spiritual meaning of these stones, um, but perhaps there is something to be said for, you know, why Native Americans uh, put certain meanings on certain stones, and if there is any validity to uh, crystal power, crystal energy. Uh, one thing that science has shown us is that there is energy in these rocks. They, they do contain uh, different, varying degrees of, of energy. So make of it what you will, but next time you look at one of these minerals, think about what is it? What, what exactly are we looking at here? Could it be life? Could it be some form of ancient life that was present on this planet well before we arrived and will likely exist on this planet well after we're gone? And is it telling its own version of its reality? Is it, is it, is it recording its own story in its own way that may be communicated to another type of species that has a very different uh, organic experience than, than human beings. So, something strange to ponder. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you on the next one.